What is the difference between ocean and sea? We've explored more of Mars than our own oceans. The world's biggest sea is tiny compared to the smallest ocean. Some seas are saltier than others, and one is even drinkable. Most seas have land borders, but there's one surprising exception. But what is the difference after all? First up, size oceans are huge. They cover 71% of Earth's surface. The Pacific Ocean is the biggest. It spans over 63 million square miles. That's like 63 million football fields put together. Seas are smaller than oceans. The Mediterranean Sea is one of the largest seas, but it only covers about 965,000 square miles. Compared to the Pacific Ocean, that's tiny. Now, let's talk about borders. Oceans don't have land all around them. They're free to roam. They touch many continents. Seas are different. They're usually partly surrounded by land. But there's one odd sea out there. The Sargasso Sea breaks all the rules. It's the only sea with no land borders at all. Instead, ocean currents define its edges. Depth is another big difference. Oceans are super deep. The Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean goes down about 36,000 feet. That's like stagging 11 Empire State buildings on top of each other. Seas are usually not as deep. The Mediterranean Sea's average depth is about 4,920 feet. Both oceans and seas are salty. But seas often have more salt. They have less fresh water mixing in, and more water evaporates from them. The Red Sea is extra salty. In fact, it is so salty that you can easily float in it, but there's always an exception. The Baltic Sea has very low salinity. Many areas of the Baltic Sea are drinkable for animals. Oceans and seas are teeming with life, but in different ways. Oceans are incredibly biodiverse, home to everything from plankton to blue whales. Seas being closer to land often have unique ecosystems. The Sargasso Sea is a nursery for endangered eels. For centuries, no one knew where European and American eels came from. The mystery was finally solved in the Sargasso Sea. Scientists discovered that both species travel thousands of miles to breed here. You've probably heard of the seven seas, but what are they exactly? The definition has changed more times than a chameleon changes colors. Each culture had its own list. The Persians had one version. The Romans had another. The Greeks had their own too. For the ancient Greeks, the seven seas included nearby waters. They counted the Aegean and Adriatic seas. The Mediterranean Black and Red Seas made the list too. So did the Caspian Sea and the Persian Gulf. But as people explored, more things changed. They found new oceans and seas. The old lists didn't work anymore. In the Middle Ages, Arab sailors had a different set of seven seas. These were the seas they sailed for trade. During the Age of Exploration, the idea changed again. Today, some people think of the seven seas as the world's major oceans. That's the Arctic, North Atlantic, and South Atlantic, plus the North Pacific, South Pacific, Indian, and Southern Oceans. But this is an official. It's more of a saying now. It just means all the oceans of the world. 